Hey folks, it's been a while since I've made a video. Um, I'm currently back up in New York for at least a few more months. And while I'm here, I thought I would start to share a couple of videos just about um, my studies and uh, in graduate school. Um, it's been a long time since I've actually uploaded videos. I, I tried to get into it back in December, but I ended up having to move. Um, so, I guess I'll start with uh, an overview of Marshall McLuhan's Understanding Media, uh, which is something that I'm actually reading right now and rereading for an essay that I'm in the midst of doing tonight. Um, and rather than just go through the whole book, I would just like to select a couple of initial quotes and excerpts that I thought maybe um, especially the YouTube community and the internet community might find interesting about the media that they're using. Um, and one of the things that Marshall McLuhan often says is that the media we're using, our technology, whether it's a telephone or a computer or a television, um, has a direct impact on the way we experience and perceive reality. The medium is the message, not the content of, of the medium, which is YouTube, but the medium itself, this computer screen, and uh, digital technologies in general. So really, really essentializing that idea the technology that we use, the things that we use and interact with in our environment, helps mold our mind and our psyche. And it makes us think a certain way, makes us act a certain way, and believe things in a certain way, and perceive reality in certain ways. It can even go on to inspire us to start thinking differently, thinking in new ways about reality, by inventing something like, let's say, even a book. For McLuhan, books were a form of media. Um, in what he called the Gutenberg Galaxy. And if you don't know who Gutenberg is, um, he was one of the initial inventors of the printing press. And we take it for granted, and it's ubiquitous, and even, even almost irrelevant these days, the printing press. Um, but it's what allows books to come into being. It, um, it starts, I think it started with a bunch of wood blocks, and you press it, press the ink down on a piece of paper, and then you do it again and again. And it was a, it was a way for us to mass produce books and thereby mass-produce uh, knowledge across uh, Western culture and Western civilization. So this book, Understanding Media, is, is kind of, um, well, he says a lot in here, but it begins with um, an initial thought, and I guess I'll read to you a few selections that I found really interesting, and then um, close up the video. So in the introduction, he begins by saying, after 3,000 years of explosion by means of fragmentary and mechanical technologies, the Western world is imploding. During the mechanical ages, we had extended our bodies into space. Today, after more than a century of electric technology, we have extended our central nervous system itself in a global embrace. Now, mind you, he's saying this before the Internet even came into being. Um, and I think this actually came out in, let's look at the year... 1964, uh, so keeping that in mind. Today, after more than a century of electric technology, we have extended our central nervous system itself in a global embrace, abolishing both space and time as far as our planet is concerned. Rapidly, we approach the final phase of the extensions of man, the technological simulation of consciousness. I'm not quite sure what he means literally by this. Um, when the creative process of knowing will be collectively and corporately extended to the whole of human society, much as we have already extended our senses and our nerves by various media. Whether the extension of consciousness, so long sought by advertisers and specific products, will be a good thing is a question for sorry, is a question that admits a wide solution. There is little possibility of answering such questions about the extensions of man without considering them all together. Uh, any extension, whether of skin, hand, or foot, affects the whole psychic and social complex. So what is he saying here in the introduction? He's basically um, letting us know that with electronic technology, the entire process of Western civilization, of inventing the alphabet in ancient Greece, for instance, of um, developing grammar and punctuation and then developing books. We didn't always have books. We had papyrus scrolls um, or codices, and now we have books. 
and then in inventing the printing press and the mass dissemination of knowledge and that whole process is now in the midst of sorry there's a um, alarm with with a battery dying in the back just like in my old apartment um, so that whole process is coming to a close it's coming to an end after 3,000 years so I guess he's putting the beginning of this process back to the development of um, I don't know ancient writing systems uh, maybe he's going back to Sumer I'm not exactly sure why he picked 3,000 years um, well and then to give an example, I guess, of what I was saying before about the medium being the message, um, some of the principal extensions together with some of their psychic and social consequences are studied in this book. Just how little consideration has been given to such matters in the past can be gathered from the consternation that 75% of your material is new. A successful book cannot venture to be more than 10% new. Such a risk seems quite worth taking at the present time when the stakes are very high and the need to understand the effects of the extensions of man becomes more urgent by the hour. And I guess uh, time uh, reveals the truth of that because this book is still around and is probably available in newer formats than this one. I think this one is actually from the 60s. Yeah, it is. It's from 64, around the time it came out, first came out. Interesting. Um, it's a mass copy, though. It's probably not worth too much, but... Um, so, why is this process reversing? What's the difference between a book, a technology of a book, and the technology of, say, I don't know, um, an iPad? Obviously, there's some differences. One is the internet, it's a freaking computer, this is a book, and, you know, there's some obvious differences. But he's, McLuhan is very good at honing in on the exact nature of a medium or technology. Um, so, just to read him, Western man acquired from the technology of literacy the power to act without reacting. The advantages of fragmenting himself in this way are seen in the case of the surgeon, who would be quite helpless if he were to become humanly involved in his operation. We acquire the art of carrying out the most dangerous social operations with complete detachment, but our detachment was a posture of non-involvement. In the electric age, when our central nervous system is technologically extended to involve us in the whole of mankind, and to incorporate the whole of mankind in us, we necessarily participate in depth in the consequences of our every action. It is no longer possible to adopt the aloof and dissociated role of the literate Westerner, including myself sitting, you know, um, doing my reading and doing graduate research. Um, I don't just do that anymore. I think sharing it with other people makes it more interesting and relevant because you get feedback. And then, you know, who else is talking about this? I mean, if you're not going to, um, well, I don't know, like, I'm sure plenty of people are mentioning McLuhan and everything in books, but getting it out there on YouTube, getting it out there on new mediums, getting ideas out there, I mean, this is a perfect space to share ideas, to create, to innovate, to collaborate. So, um, so yeah, we, to be a dissociated or um, uninvolved scholar doesn't make sense anymore in an era where our knowledge and our activities are united like this. You know, like when you do code, you're, it's doing a program. The program has a direct impact on society. Um, even if it's something like a Google search engine or a MapQuest invention, something like that directly participates in the way people act and react every day. It enables us. It empowers us. Look at YouTube. It empowers me to broadcast myself online. Um, so then he says something interesting. Um... The aspiration of our time for wholeness, empathy, and depth of awareness is a natural adjunct of electric technology. The age of mechanical industry that preceded us found vehement assertion of private outlook, the natural mode of expression. Every culture and every age has its favorite model of perception and knowledge that, is it, that it is inclined to prescribe for everybody and everything. The mark of our time is this revulsion against imposed patterns. We are suddenly eager to have things and people declare their beings totally. There is a deep and ultimate harmony of all being. Such is the faith in which this book has been written. It explores the contours of our own extended beings in our technologies, seeking the principle of intelligibly in, <laughs> intelligi intelligibility in each of them. Hmm. In the full confidence 
that it is possible to win an understanding of these forms that will bring them into orderly service. I have looked at them anew, accepting very little of the conventional wisdom concerning them. Um, well, what I think he's saying here is a kind of worldview or philosophy of technology that we may not even hold today. And just to give you the tangible expression, here's my cell phone. It's an iPhone 4. When I use it, I check my email, I make phone calls, I send text messages, I play video games, um, I check Facebook, I tweet, all that stuff. Here's are things that I do with it. But what is the nature of that doing that's affecting my consciousness? What is the nature of that phone itself that is reflective of my mind, my imagination? So that's where McLuhan begins. He starts with the idea that no, we can't see technology as separate objects, have nothing to do with the way we think, and have having no influence on the way we think. They are an extension of who we are. The shoe is an extension of the foot, or McLuhan said the wheel is the extension of the foot. Um, and these phones are almost like extensions of my eye. They're extensions of my whole nervous system of perceiving and understanding and hearing other people. Um, there's a very holistic sense with electronics because it makes you aware of everything that's going on around you and it connects you to everybody else around you. So in a way it extends your nervous system. And he's using very biological metaphors. Um, which I think in modern times, some people have discredited him and said, like, look, McLuhan is talking about extensions of the nervous system, and this is unfounded. Whether or not it's literally biologically true that this is an extension of my nervous system, and there have been people who have talked about this, like um, Andy Clark, I think he called it extended mind. Um, whether or not that's literally true, it does have an anthropological or sociological impact on the way I think, and it may even have some kind of expression of myself through this, of a human being through this. It's a screen, um, it extends my mind into the world, it extends uh, my awareness into the world. Um, maybe these glasses, maybe these clothes accentuate my personality and so on. So on a very fundamental rudimentary level, the technology we use around us are extensions of who we are. And you can call it biological if you want. You can also just call it a psychological or even spiritual. Like from a, for instance, a Carl Jungian, a Jungian perspective, everything that we perceive is also and simultaneously um, some kind of expression of our being, some kind of um, dimension of the psyche. So for Jung, he believed that even technology itself first begins as an image in the soul and gets projected out into the world. And in a, in a kind of similar way, I think McLuhan is saying that any technology that we create is an extension of our nervous system. Um, but linear technology, the, the technology of the book from it, that I've been reading you, um, creates an experience of reality that is linear because you read from line to line, from left to right, from left to right, um, in a sequence. So it creates the illusion or the experience of an abstract linear space. Um, and Leonard Schlein, who's another guy who talks a lot about this, had mentioned that um, you know you can almost see the alphabet and the writing systems as an invention, uh, an artistic creation. Um, and the artist is usually the one who articulates an emergent uh, worldview or perspective. So um, we're moving away from this linear, rational, mechanistic um, worldview or philosophy into a new world space where we're all connected, we're all constantly online, we're all immediately present all over the world to the internet. Um, and that's going to have a huge, huge impact on us, just like writing systems did for all of Western civilization, for creating the West in what it is today. And some people have even gone so far to say is that writing develops the ego, it develops individuality, it allows us to have this ego that's reading, it has this passive observer that's observing something. Um, and McLuhan himself said that, you know, the eye is the organ that's most associated with reading, because when you read, what do you do? You, you hold the book and you look like this, and you go, move your eyes back and forth. Sure, you're participating in an inward way, 
But um, let's say you're standing on a hill and then you see something going on um, a few yards away from you. Let's say there's a wolf or something. You could be scared maybe, but you have a sense of detachment. Let's say that wolf is hunting a rabbit. Um, it can be a pretty intense experience to see that happening on an emotional level, but I think McLuhan is trying to give us the example that we are we can be passive observers with this kind of technology, and it induces and encourage, encourages us to be passive rather than participatory. Electric technology is, if we consider it to be an extension of ourselves and our nervous system, it's very hard to do that. It's very difficult to detach and separate from the experience that you're having with these beeps and these tweets and these sounds and vibrations like and tactile experience of like actually holding this or um, one perfect example actually in a great book by Clay Shirky called Cognitive Surplus he ends the book with a question where's the mouse? Um, one of his friend's daughters is about to sit down and watch a movie with them and she gets up and runs behind the television looking for something and then she goes up to her father and says where's the mouse? So we have this new generation of people who are participatory, interactive, collaborative, and involved. Involved in a way that the 60s hippies were, couldn't even be. Um, but if you notice, electric technology began way before the 60s. Actually, in 1844, the electric telegram was invented. Um, so for McLuhan, electric technology and electricity has been the catalyst for this um, collective nervous system that's being born on the earth and he called it the global village or the global tribe um, and basically he believed everybody was going to get to a point where everyone will be participating with each other in a, in a timeless spaceless interconnectivity and if you think about it the net is certainly headed in that direction and whatever was true for television at the time that he was writing is now even more true for um, our own age so, um, I don't really want to go on too much longer because this, I can end up rambling for a long time about all of this stuff, but, um, I would like to comment because he did begin in the book by saying after 3,000 years of, of Western linear rational thought, we're moving into a new era of electric participation with the whole world, um, why? Why, after 3,000 years, why are we returning back to the ancient animistic global, not global, but tribal village? Why are we going back to that? Um, you know, since the 60s, we've had the hippies, and we've had the return of um, the importance of music and dancing and sexuality, all these things that are more, um, honestly, less, quote-unquote, civilized, according to the modern Western literate individual the, the antithesis of who he was as this composed person. Um, now we're more down to earth, we're more open, we, we share more, we collaborate more, we're not as interested in hierarchies and bureaucracies. We don't want to be or partake in that. And in many senses, the internet generation, those of us who are online doing coding and so on and so forth, are in a whole new territory. And McLuhan said, you know, there was going to be a huge cultural divide between the literate Western print culture and the new emergent electric global or planetary culture. And the global or planetary culture has a kind of integrated, holistic sense of who, who they are. They're no longer separated or divided. They're no longer dissociated from their bodies and their emotions. They're participating again in their whole selves because the medium they're using, the internet, encourages that, enables that, and so forth. Now, I know some people think that maybe the internet dissociates us from our um, our environment, and I think you can actually make a case for that being the case to some degree, but only one, really one dimension of it. There's actually a really good book that I haven't read yet, but just came out, um, and I forgot the author's name, but she had a great point that the uh, digital technologies have two aspects. One is the the uh, horizontal, oh, sorry, the horizontal, which is the ability to network and share and, and communicate. That's an, a hugely essential part of the internet, no matter what you're using it for. Um, and that is permeating all of society, blurring online and offline. So when you text, you're sending a thing to a satellite, these invisible radio waves to a satellite, and then it's coming back down, and you're meeting for dinner. 
Um, at the same time, the same person could be on World of Warcraft, completely devoid of or detached from that world. But maybe they're not, because they're also texting at the same time. So the ubiquity of the horizontal, which is sharing, communicating, and then the vertical, which is just blasting off into cyberspace, these two are ambiguous. They flow into each other. It's not true, or it's, it's too much of a simplistic argument to say that the internet is only making us shoot out into, into nothingness. It's constantly finding new ways to integrate the virtual and the real. And that's one of the big things that I think, that I haven't mentioned yet, but the blurring of the virtual and the real is a massive impact, a massive uh, influence with digital technology that I think and that I believe, if we go back to the beginning of what I've been saying about the medium being the message, that given enough time, this culture will fundamentally change in a philosophical, spiritual, mystical, and cultural and political ways that we can't even imagine because we're still too embedded in this old culture and things are changing very quickly. Um, so all of that being said, why this full circle? Why are we coming full circle? Why are we going back to this organic network, almost like an ecology, but it's a what I call a noetic ecology? Why are we going into this? Why are we going back to this? Um, and McLuhan actually has an interesting phrase towards the end of uh, one of the beginning chapters um, oh, called The Medium as the Message. Um, now, first of all, we have to understand what uh, electricity is. And he begins by saying the message of the electric light, because he begins with the invention of electricity, is like the message of electric power in industry, totally radical, pervasive, and decentralized. They eliminate time and space factors in human association, exactly as do radio, telegraph, telephone, and TV, creating involvement in depth. Um, and then he begins by saying, um, all right, let me see if I can. So he, he begins by comparing it. The mechanized person, the mechanization, is achieved by fragmenting any process and by putting the fragmented parts in a series, just like writing. You break down language, which used to be, you know, image-based, visual, uh, visual, oral, um, acoustic sounds, expressions, body language, this whole whole body experience of language. You break that down into A, B, C, D, E, F, G, um, alpha, beta, so on and so forth. You break it down into parts, and then put it in a frag put these fragmented parts in a series, like these lines on the page in a series. So that's how they do it, and that's how we kind of view the universe still, as far as industry is concerned. Um, yet, as David Hume showed in the 18th century, there is no principle of causality in a mere sequence. That one thing follows another accounts for nothing. Nothing follows from, follows from following except change. So the greatest of all reversals occurred with electricity. That ended the sequence of making things instant. Oh, sorry. That ended the sequence by making things instant. You no longer have a sequence of A, B, C, D. You just load the screen and there it is. It's all there. Um, so the, the instantaneity um, is something that the internet and the electricity has brought. With instant speed, the causes of things begin to emerge to awareness again, as they had not done with things in sequence. And in concatenation accordingly. Instead of asking which came first, the chicken or the egg, it suddenly seemed that a chicken was an egg's idea for getting more eggs. That's funny. Um, and now, as far as the reversal is concerned, he goes into it a little bit further. Um, just before an airplane breaks the sound barrier, sound waves become visible on wings of the plane. Suddenly, vi the sudden visibility of sound just as sound ends is an apt instance of that great pattern of being that reveals new and opposite forms just as the earlier forms reach their peak performance. So, mechanization was never so vividly fragmented or sequential as in the birth of movies. The moment that translated us beyond mechanism into the world of growth and organic interrelation. The movie, by sheer speeding up of the mechanical, carried us from the world of sequence and connections into the world of creative configuration and structure. The message of the movie medium is that of transition from lineal connections 
to configurations. It is the tradition that produced the now quite correct observation. If it works, it's obsolete. When electric speed further takes us from mechanical movie sequences and the lines of force in the structure, and the structures in media become loud and clear. We return to the inclusive form of the icon. And for a modern day example, you can even take your own computer, which is made up of zeros and ones. But the zeros and ones, the programming, the code, um, gets compiled into other codes, more accessible human language, uh, well, at least coding language, which in turn creates programs like the one I'm using right now. I don't have to know any code, I don't have to know any logic, I just click an icon on the screen and the image opens up. So even though technology, electronic technology and digital technology is based on very logical, very, very masterful scientific crafts and techniques of manipulating electricity and um, motherboards and so on and so forth, all that digital paraphernalia. The experience that I have when I open this computer has nothing to do with, honestly, the left brain, the logical linear thinking. I click a screen, I click images, I move things around, I interact in a web of networks. It's visual based, it's image based, and it's iconic based. Um, plus I'm listening to music. So the whole electronic medium is a complete reversal moving away from text, back to image, back to sound. Um, but it can include text within it, you know, bloggers. Uh, I was just thinking today, like, I, I've been reading this book and a bunch of other books today and doing a lot of writing, and I'm thinking, well, maybe I'm becoming an old-fashioned literate person because I have to do this stuff for grad school, and does this have any relevance for today? And then I think, well, if I make a video about the, what I'm talking about, um, I, I feel like that kind of gets me back in the participatory mode. And in addition, um, bloggers and, and blogging and writing, I mean, people think about writing all the time. A few years back, I used to be more of an intense, uh, active blogger, and I thought about writing articles all the time. So writing doesn't disappear. It just becomes miniaturized within this larger medium that's kind of eating it up. So now you can get the medium as a message and understanding media on your computer. You can watch Marshall McLuhan on YouTube, which I think is really fun. It's a very strange experience. Um, so what do you, what would you get from this video um, coming out of it? Um, that media, electronic technology, is reversing the whole process of linear Western rational thought um, and culture, and it's bringing back a holistic, acoustic experience of interconnection with the whole world. And this guy, Marshall McLuhan, has said this about 40, 50 years ago, which is pretty interesting to me. Um, but I think the real power of the internet um, can actually acknowledge some of the things that he stated rather prophetically. Um, so uh, that's really it for this video. I guess it went longer than I expected. But uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy. And if um, you like the way the channel's going, please subscribe. And um, if you have any suggestions or thoughts or questions or comments you'd like me to uh, reflect on, please let me know. Um, it was a pleasure. Thanks.